uh, working currently at Unitech New Zealand over in Auckland. Today, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about some of the experiences myself and a colleague called Tom Cochran have had with learners and teachers with ePortfolios. So this is more of a, rather than a how-to, it's a what if. What if you give learners the structure to then be creative, to follow their own and find their own identity? It's not going to be an academic paper, but Tom and I have got plenty online if you are interested. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a quick look. Um, people have already spoken quite a lot about the VET ePortfolio roadmap, but I'll just touch on that again. Um, I'd look, like to look at Web2 ePortfolios in particular, and look a little bit about the ethos of Web2, give you some examples and some strategies and recommendations. Now, we've done quite a few trials in various places, but rather than go into each trial in depth, because I've only got 30 minutes, I've pulled out key strategies and recommendations and then illustrated them. So, the, the roadmap, um, it was released in June 2009, so this year, and what I'm proposing is that Web2 ePortfolios are actually linking quite nicely with the um, nine strategies um, and ideas that, they, that the roadmap explores, and also the, the three main focus of the, the roadmap. Now, sociocultural theory, it focuses on the fact that um, context, cognition and human development are basically interconnected. We're all part of communities, the communities have got rules, tools, and we perform different activities, and that's how we learn. So um, this uh, diagram basically just shows some of the complex interrelated actions and activities that we undertake and kind of pulls it all together into what an e-portfolio has the potential to be. Using e-portfolio is a bit of a generic term. Um, it, it's actually the researchers uh, divided it into six main types. And within those types, you've got various purposes. So I've put some of the purposes up here. Now, what tends to happen, uh, especially in higher education, is the focus is on assessment. This uh, forgets really important stuff like the learning that can happen, both for the teachers and for the learners. So, Web2. Um, thinking about all the different ePortfolio platforms that if you were there last night, some, some were uh, showcased, and also Web2 ePortfolios. I'm not going to critique all the different platforms, um, but what I would like to do is, show, is sort of uh, explore the link between sociocultural theory and Web2. So the ethos of Web2. Web2 encourages users to create their own content. That content may not actually be f finished or polished, but people can then come and comment on it and give feedback, and that may in turn change the shape of that content. Um, this can be an ongoing conversation. So just a, a little example here. I developed a uh, mind map and scenario around ePortfolios, put it out there in my ePortfolio. A guy called Ray Tolley from the UK came on board and said, oh, what, what about this and what about that? And I don't understand this. And through that conversation, we both had an influence on each other's understandings. Um, he then recommended the uh, artifacts to some folk in the UK who've taken them and have started to develop them for learners around raising awareness of safety and the internet. In turn, they've brought me on board to, to help out on that, and I'll be able to use what they have developed it into with my learners. So it's really a true collaborative project, and kind of just illustrates what Web2 and the internet can achieve if you look at it in a global sense. So this is actually the mind map. It's, it's on your handout, if you did get a handout. Um, and what I wanted to show here is this is some of the key things that could be included in a portfolio. It's quite um, risky to, uh, I think Ruth was, was focusing on this, to kind of say, okay, in your e-portfolio you must have this and this and this. Rather, uh, in some ways, you uh, encourage students to be more creative by saying, okay, select some of these aspects to um, 
show your learning journey. This is also thinking of Web 2. Um, these aspects might be in your uh, uh, sort of your ePortfolio platform, but also uh, in a Web 2 one, the content might be hosted in various different places by a myriad different um, providers. So it gets around a whole heap of problems around storage and things like that. So another way of looking at ePortfolios, uh, Ruth, Ruth was saying that some of her learners like the idea of kind of dumping something in a place and then bringing it forward. So this sort of echoes some of that. If you think of an ePortfolio as putting on a performance, backstage, you've got half-finished projects, you've got projects that you've abandoned because they didn't kind of work too well, you've got things ready for your next play even. There's also space to be an apprentice, you're sweeping the floors, you're painting the scenery, and then you start your acting career. You get feedback from peers, you get feedback from your director, and finally you get your day on the stage. There's a script, you could also call this a job description or maybe a rubric for an assessment, um, and when you do your performance, your audience, you probably know who your audience are, but maybe there are people in the audience that you don't know, this could be your global audience you're probably likely to get some sort of critical feedback um, in some sort of iterative loop, so the next performance you put on, you can then improve your performance. So it, it can be quite an interesting way of looking at e-portfolios, private space, public space, and awareness of your audience and appropriacy. So, educators. E-portfolios are not just for learners. I would strongly say that the educators and trainers also have to have their own e-portfolio. Otherwise, it's a bit like knowing how the engine of a car works, but then trying to teach somebody to drive without ever having driven. So I remember the first time I went out in the car with my, my dear dad. And in the car, oh, I've been on a bike, I've ridden a horse, no worries. So we come to the first corner. I gently weight my left hip, because we're going around the left-hand corner, tweak the wheel, my dad yells, grabs the wheel, wrestles it to the left so that we don't actually mount the curve on the other side of the road. So, yep, I, I kind of, I'd read the road code, I knew how the car worked, but if anyone had asked me to, to teach how to drive, I would have failed at the first hurdle. So, having your own e-portfolio, you actually work out what the glitches are, what the potential is. How are you as a person developing by having your own e-portfolio. This you can then share with your learners. Uh, I've got an example later um, of, of, an, of a lecturer who shared his e-portfolio and some of his um, successes and joy, but I'll, I'll um, save that for a moment. So some of the PD that we've been, uh, Tom and I have been using with uh, educators in various places. We've really tried to mix it up. So rather than just kind of workshops, generic workshops, we've had a few of those, what we've also done is put together a suite of online tools in Moodle so that uh, faculty can kind of access that at any point. We've had sharing best practice and effective practice in mini symposia. We've got just-in-time training, so you know those moments where you go, oh no, and help, then, then we can run across and help somebody out. We've had informal and formal brainstorming sessions. We've tried mentor and buddy type relationships, setting those up. And we've also helped people embed the idea of e-portfolios into their programs. So, first uh, example that I'd like to uh, give you with learners using e-portfolios is one from Dubai. Um, I've worked there for six years. Um, Dubai Men's College, it's uh, Emirati students, mainly 17 to 20 years old. The uh, college has a lot of vocational uh, type courses, all the way from certificate to bachelor's. And here you can see, for example, aviation, um, building science, uh, communication technologies, and business. So that's sort of a big range. The first year of Dubai Men's College is a freshman year. And integrated into a computer research skills and projects course is an e-portfolio. Now, in Dubai, the main telecoms provider, Etisalat, actually 
blocks a whole load of Web2 sites, so that wasn't going to be an option for us. So we got students to develop an e-portfolio in Dreamweaver. They all had their own laptops, I forgot to mention that, and the uh, e-portfolio was stored <coughs> on their laptop. If they wanted to, they could go and find a host to, to put it out online and share it like that if they wanted to. Um, we did a research project alongside. We found students really, no, they, they were very aware of the direct relation between what they were doing and the skills they were getting in their e-portfolio and the outcomes of the program, but also what they were going to have to do later in life um, in the big wide world. Uh, just over 70% did say, however, that if it wasn't compulsory, they probably wouldn't have done it. Um, there were some concerns around uh, time it took, but most students really appreciated the fact that they could personalise this space and really um, show how they should put, put their identity out there. Now moving a little bit closer to home, um, Unitech. Unitech in Auckland, uh, we have a wide range of uh, students, different ethnicities, um, age groups, educational backgrounds, and we run a huge range of different courses. It's a multi-sector establishment, all the way from certificates to PhD. A lot of the courses, we've got boat building, contemporary music, um, IT, accounting, you, you name it, we do them pretty much. Now, um, as I mentioned uh, before, what I'm going to do is the, the trials that we've had so far have been in vet nursing, contemporary music, um, landscape design, product design, built environments, uh, Māori studio, uh, architecture studio, and languages. I don't think I've forgotten any. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pull out some of the strategies that we recommend um, just based on our experiences. So embedding in a program. If you are going to use ePortfolios as part of a program, it has to be embedded. It can't be seen as an add-on because of things like well, just valuing um, the effort that students put in, the effort that lecturers put in, and just time, time constraints. Um, it also focuses on matching pedagogy with the program and the ePortfolio, and also looks at maybe changing the focus from content to student skills. So much more holistic. This example here was landscape design, if you hadn't guessed. Um, and what we did here was students created an e-portfolio using box blocks. So the box blocks <coughs> kind of acted as an aggregator and they put the content out in YouTube and Flickr uh, and places like that. Comments, feedback, etc. were also, uh, you, you were able to do that in Vox. And students could choose who fed back by um, uh, looking at the privacy on each of the, the postings that they made. They were also able to do reflections. These could be in audio or video. And um, the end result, the end project, was, was assessed internally, but also was entered for the Ellerslie Flower Show, International Flower Show. And in 2007, they actually won gold and silver for a couple of their, their designs. So it had a real um, motivational effect for, for everybody involved. So one of the focuses for education is to encourage students to develop critical thinking skills that allow them to go into authentic situations and solve problems. Um, and also apply the concepts and skills that they've learned. So authentic, this could be either a simulation um, or it could actually be out in the, the real world. The main example I'd like to, to use here is the Māori stu uh, Architecture Studio. They wanted to share a lot of the practices that they were learning out in the field. So what we did, and they wanted to showcase some of this, but they also wanted to, to have a safe space where they could share the ideas and feedback on the ideas. They didn't want individual e-portfolios, so we put together a group e-portfolio using Ning and put their showcase into Moodle. So you've got sort of the, the ownership side for the teachers and the showcase in Moodle, but with Ning, students control the content and create the content. Um, so, so we had quite a nice balance there. That's actually underway, 
And students so far have reacted extremely positively to it, and it's, it's a pretty active forum. Relevancy is another key factor. Relevant not just to the learning outcomes and the graduate profile of a program, but also to is, is, is relevant uh, to the um, business sector. What skills do, are the business sector actually looking for when the students graduate? This is an example from boat building. Um, students set up uh, e-portfolios in WordPress blogs. This particular guy used time stop photography over months of one of uh, the designs that he was involved in. He then put all of the frames together into videos on YouTube, popped them up through his WordPress ePortfolio. This was seen by a company in the US who got hold of him and said, would you like a job? So um, relevant, it was directly relevant to the needs of the market at that time. Interestingly, the, the guy has continued to keep his, his um, e-portfolio even now he's uh, graduated from Unitech. Both reflection and evaluation are two key aspects of e-portfolios. Evaluation, I'll start with first. Now, evaluation skills are really important to collect and select what you're going to put in your e-portfolio and then decide what, what, how it's going to be presented to different audiences. So these are skills that people have to learn. That it, it's not just automatically going to happen. Um, part of this process, therefore, is through reflection. And again, reflection isn't something that people naturally have within them. They will, uh, most people need to be given quite a, a uh, clear framework for reflection and some meaningful tasks to help them actually understand how reflection goes, but then also to pick it apart and see how that reflection is going to help them. Feedback, timely feedback. Now, feedback can be from the stakeholders, from tutors, from peers, or if a person chooses, with the rest of the world. These examples here, um, the <coughs> one in black, that's from tutors, and it was mainly motivational comments just to keep the, the focus going through the design process. Um, the white one in the middle with the designs, that was actually a student reflecting on the fact that he had a great meeting, face-to-face -face meeting with a tutor and had got so much out of it. Um, so it was kind of continuing the, the reflective process um, and then feeding back to the tutor. And the one in the, the, the video you can see there, um, she was reflecting on how some of the tools had really helped her to uh, uh, get her e-portfolio together. So just a quick note here, in the handout uh, you'll see a link to a slide share. The PowerPoint is in slide share and all of these videos down the bottom there's a link to the YouTube address. So if you do want to go and watch some of these videos, you, you can do. Now, um, sports, the sports department, they haven't actually got e-portfolios yet. Um, beginning of this week, I was running, a, facilitating a, a, a session with sports, and the discussion came up around the fact that it's so difficult for graduates to get um, positions when they graduate. It's difficult to differentiate in a really competitive market, and also that networking was incredibly important. So we got discussing these types of things, and they that are ah, e-portfolios. We said let's ha let's kind of have a look at these. So hopefully, with our next uh, intake of students, the sports departments are going to use e-portfolios to capture some of the strengths and skills of the sports students and the graduates, and then to build an e-portfolio that they can graduate and go forward with, but also to include the community and network that they've built throughout their, their years at Unitech um, in the development of their skills. So these, these guys will have a direct input and um, ability to feed back into the development of the graduates. Another key thing that I'd like to focus on is diversity. Um, a lot of diverse ethnicities, as I mentioned. Within those 
It's necessary. Some cultures really do not feel comfortable talking about themselves. I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy. I've been brought up to be, right, okay, off you go. Um, talk yourself up. Now, I know some students, especially Pacifica and Māori students, really do, they feel at best uncomfortable, but worse, really quite upset by having to talk about themselves. Their achievements are part of their community's achievements. Therefore, them talking about themselves just doesn't fit. So, e-portfolios could, especially with recognition of prior learning, offer one way of making these students more comfortable. They could get their community to speak on their behalf, for example, and record that, or record themselves, video themselves out on the job, actually hands-on, which is not only really verifiable, um, but it also takes away, look, this is what I can do, but I don't have to talk about myself doing it. That kind of leads to preferences as well, so personal preferences. Some people will not want to share their reflections with the rest of the world, some will. Some will only want to share them with peers, some only with the tutor, and some maybe they won't want to share at all. So building in flexibility for preferences is really important. Um, an example here was vet nursing. The vet nurses set up wikis um, as e-portfolios. In the paid version, you could set privacy options on folders, on pages, or on the whole wiki. It was fascinating. First of all, nobody wanted to make their wiki public, um, just shared with their peers and their tutor. However, a couple, as they developed, got more confidence, found their voice, did actually open it up to the rest of the wide world. So it was, it was kind of quite an interesting process there. Portability was incredibly important. Um, Tom's done a lot of work on this. We, um, a, lot, a lot of the trials that we had used mobile, wireless mobile devices, which could di directly upload content to, for example, Vox blogs. So this meant, um, you, see, you see a couple of the, the, the videos here. The first one with the guy with the, with the um, head scars, they were off to Queenstown to go snowboarding. Um, but were still able to collaborate with the project that they were doing um, at Unitech. And also they, they found some of the things that had been in design, some of the things that they experienced were actually quite influential in the, in the final design that they did. And the other guy down the bottom with the, with the, with the cap on, he was just about to go um, uh, kite surfing on the beach. And so he's got his mobile phone, he's doing his reflection. This was his final reflection. He did say in this reflection that if he hadn't been able to record his reflections rather than type them in words, then he wouldn't have done them. And this would have had, he realised, a direct re re effect on the quality of the final design that he came up with. Creative and personalisable. This kind of pulls it all together. This is <coughs> the use of the tools, flexibility of the use of the tools, it's flexibility of what goes in um, the portfolio is how it looks. Creativity comes from kind of giving up your power to describe exactly what you're expecting and take a risk. See what learners really can come up with if you give them the freedom. I was having a chat with Wendy Warren yesterday and she was saying, oh yeah, that they'd done a task and she kind of said, well, I'd like this audio but didn't say what tools she wanted, she just said it needed to be two minutes long and it needed to tell a story. And she was amazed at some of the creative results that she got. And we kind of, I asked the question, so if you'd said what tool they were to use, do you think the results would have been as good? And she said, oh, no, not, not in a million years. So, allow the freedom. But, <laughs> here's your big but, just letting go of the reins, <laughs> you, you'll crash. You need to have plenty of support and scaffolding in the background. So this could be in the form of, um, so, so we've got Moodle courses that show the students exactly how to use some of the tools, what the guidelines are. Um, we also try to set up communities, so you'll see here with languages, our Flickr pictures, so really create a sense of community so that when you've got that moment of fear, you can maybe find somebody within your community who can help you. We also bring in um, students 
who've already graduated or are third year students, like in the, in the top here. This is a guy called Noel, who's a third year design student, who came in to talk to our first year students about e-portfolios. So that sort of mentoring type relationship. And we also try to build in quite a few face-to-face -face sessions where we have a technology steward, as, as Wenya calls them, um, who kind of helps people who've got issues, but also to introduce some different approaches that people might want to take on board. I mentioned re group e-portfolios before. Now, scaffolding, some departments and some people won't initially want an individual e-portfolio. A group e-portfolio can give people the confidence, sort of like, oh, oh, that's what, oh, that's how it goes, to then move out and develop their own individual e-portfolio. But they need that group um, momentum first, to kind of learn, learn the basic skills and also just to sort of get their own confidence going. And I mentioned sharing success. So this was actually one of the uh, uh, educators at Unitech in contemporary music. And he had one of his music performances accepted uh, by one of the, the top institutions in New Zealand, and it was performed. So he kind of shared his delight in this process and his own learning journey with his students, who really appreciated the fact that he was putting himself out there as well. So coming back round to the um, VET um, ePortfolio roadmap, you can see Web2 ePortfolios, there's got issues. There are issues around them for sure. However, a lot of the benefits do actually fit in with some of the nine main points in the roadmap. So you, you might want to um, consider Web2 ePortfolios. In conclusion, these are just uh, screenshots from, from a whole load of uh, the, the trials that we've been doing. But in conclusion, what I wanted to say is something that we've observed with lecturers using ePortfolios is that they've had to let go of some of their power. This is uncomfortable for many of those lecturers. It is a shift in their own identity. But by, using, by having their own ePortfolio, it's actually helped them make this transition. And in the end, what happens is you get a lot more collaboration, and it's a collaborative learning journey that happens. Um, and some of the creative results from the graduation are just incredible. The feedback we've had from students, some of it's kind of, yeah, no, it's not for me. Some was, I was scared to begin with, but now, pff, no worries. And some of it was, wow, this is, some, this is the best experience I've ever had. So, well worth doing, and um, yeah, let go. <laughs>
question was around um, whether, uh, around whether uh, we should have to make things compulsory and uh, linked back to a, a comment I made earlier around the UAE and the fact that the e-portfolios were compulsory there. How do we have to change our thinking? Um, I think possibly one of the things that we have to do is, as an education uh, setup, is not focus so much on products and assessment, more focus on process. If we can value the skills that we take on board and the process, the journey it takes to get there. So e-portfolios, I would say, are all about process. Um, and one of the things, uh, if you embed an e-portfolio into a program, for example, and each week one aspect of something that you do within the program <coughs> is directly related to something that you do in the e-portfolio, it's kind of like you have to do something before you value it. Um, but I do think it is directly related to the, the ultimate focus on verification and assessment. We, we, I, I reckon we have to shift that. Thank you.